In this video, we will go over the importance of lighting in filmmaking as well as different ways you can set up lighting equipment to achieve a specific mood or effect for your video. Hi there, Edu Marketers. It is Ginger Bell, best-selling author of The Edu Marketer, The Edu Marketing Academy, and founder and CEO of Edu Marketing, your full-service video production and content creation agency. In this episode of The Edu Marketer Show, we are talking about lighting. Everything today is about getting the best lighting for your video. And I'm so happy you're shooting video and you're smart and you don't want to be in the dark about the power of video in your business. Hey, sorry about that. I couldn't help but add some reference to lighting, could I? Today's smartphones make it easy to record video virtually from anywhere. And if you have a decent set of headphones, your audio can be pretty okay too. But lighting, man, it can break you. Not literally, but figuratively. It's painful to watch a video that's produced with too much or too little lighting. Today's lighting equipment makes it easy for you to have a mobile video production kit with you virtually all the time. So let's look at how to add lighting to your videos. Lighting is an essential component of filmmaking. It gives you a wide range of options for arrangement styles, moods, and overall impact of the scene. It helps you tell a story through a specific feeling or a mood. There are a number of ways in which you can set up lighting for cinematography. It's important to remember that there are multiple ways a lighting set can be set up to refer to. For example, backlight, rim light, and hair light are all different terms for placing a light behind and above the subject's head. Remember to remain patient when it comes to learning how to use lighting equipment. It takes time and practice. And the more you practice, the quicker you will learn from the tricks to perfecting the lighting of a scene. Let's start with the basics. The purpose of a camera is to catch light. That makes lighting a critical component of photography and filmmaking. If you have excellent lighting, your photo or video can achieve clean and a professional look based on the overall idea that you, the viewer, to convey your message from your work. Let's look at the three-point lighting technique. The three-point lighting technique refers to a lighting technique that involves three lights. First, a key light. Next, a fill light. And finally, a backlight. These each have different purposes and can be used to manipulate the overall tone of the scene. Using these three lights is recommended for video production. Let's look at the first technique, the key light. This is the primary and strongest light on a scene. It's the direct source for your light for your production and should be the first light you set up. Using this light on your subject will light the shape of their face and body. Do not place this light close to the camera, otherwise you don't have any depth or detail in your shots. A good starting place for the key light is in front of the subject's face at a 45 degree angle. Make sure there's a good distance between the light and the subject. You don't want the light light directly in their face as they will look flat. Next, let's look at the fill light. The fill light is a supporting light, just as the backlight is. It is called the fill light because it fills in the shadows that the key light creates. This is usually placed on the opposite side of the key light so it can fill in where it is needed. Since this is used to fill in shadows from the key light, it's important to remember to not create any shadows with the fill light itself. The closer the fill light is to the camera, the less shadows it will make. The fill light allows for an even look and limits the amount of harsh shadows that show up from the key light. If you were to remove this from the scene, you would be creating a more dramatic effect since shadows would be more present in the scene. And finally, let's look at the backlight. Backlights are placed behind the subject and places light on their head and shoulders. It's called backlight because it's supposed to light the back of the subject. This light is usually placed a bit higher than the subject's head and adds depth to your scene. It makes your subject look real rather than 2D. It separates the subject from the background, showing detail. Using these three lights together is a great starting point for you and if you're just learning the basics of lighting for cinematography. It paves room for creativity and gets you familiar with how to set up and use lighting 
lighting equipment properly. Now that we've covered your primary light set, let's move on to mood lighting. We'll start what's called hard lighting. Hard lighting is a technique that's used to create a moody shot through the sharp and harsh shadows. It sets the mood. It shows you where the edges are in the shot. That moody effect is generated by a single light source, either a small light or the sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The smaller the light source, the harsher the light is. And of course, after hard lighting is soft lighting. Soft lighting is a lighting technique that refers to the soft shadows and edges that are created from a broad lighting source. The bigger the light source, the softer the light. Your key and fill lights are considered soft lights. Using this type of lighting helps create a more even look since the light will be hitting the subject from multiple angles. That's why I love soft lighting. <laughs> then you have what's called high key lighting. High key lighting refers to a style of lighting that decreases the lighting ratio in the scene. All three lights are used to create this effect. This is used by filmmakers to adjust the mood and tone of a scene. You can achieve this look by using large soft boxes and light sources. As mentioned earlier, for hard lighting, the larger the light source, the softer your shadows will be. This remains the same for high key lighting. It is dominated by bright lights and the white tones that come from those lights. When high key lighting is used, the mid-tones are white. There are hardly any shadows when this lighting technique is being used, which makes it the best type of lighting for cosmetic and food commercials, music videos, and sitcoms. It does show up in films here and there, but it's rare, as it's very easy for a shot to be overexposed using high key lighting. This technique is used to produce a feeling of optimism, happiness, and youthfulness. According to Adobe, this type of lighting implies truth and openness, which makes it a favorite lighting source for those who are recording training videos. So let's move on to low key lighting. The purpose of low key lighting is to create shadows contrast and an emphasis on the blackness in a shot. This is the opposite of high key lighting and you only need to use one light to achieve this effect. Those shots show minimal midtones and whites. Without the appearance of midtones or whites, it makes room for the shot to have a ton of contrast. If anything, you will see more black shadows than white in these types of scenes. It's best to shoot low key lighting shots in front of dark backgrounds as light backdrops bounce light back more easily. The overall effect of low key lighting gives photos a dramatic and mysterious feel. If you want to portray a serious feeling, use these types of lighting. And finally, we'll talk about bounce lighting. This refers to the light that bounces off of a reflector and onto the subject. You can use a reflector to bounce light from the sun or any light source back on the subject. When you use a reflector, it helps spread light over a large area. Reflectors can can be used to create any type of light from soft light to fill light to backlight. Whatever lighting you use, be sure to have you or your subject in the center of the light source. You don't have to use great big lights if you're shooting on your smartphone or your video camera. We've got a great handout on what equipment you need to get started shooting video. We've included the link and this free guide in the section below. And please let me know what challenges and successes that you've had creating and producing your own videos. Leave your comments in the comment section below. If you're looking for some great additional resources, we have a resource center with some really great downloadable items that's available to help you in your business. We'll drop that link down below. And of course, you can always find more information about us at edumarketing.com. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified about our next episode of the Edu Marketing Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Ginger Bell and let's go Edu Market.